Welcome to another episode of the Travel Hooper. I am your host, Alan Pettigrew, and today my uh, partner in crime is going to be Calvin. What's up, y'all? Um, <laughs> Phil should be joining us shortly. But, you know. Yeah. I feel like I have my NPR voice on. I'm a little stuffy up to us, so I'm going to get to close to the mic today. Nah, man. But we just saw two series close out. We got the finals on Wednesday. Calvin, how you feeling? Um, I am feeling a little tired of watching basketball every day. Um, but um, like I'm, I'm not wildly surprised. Certainly, as far as like the Lakers being in there. Um, granted, like with one or two slightly different decisions. It's probably a longer, a slightly longer series than we got. Um, Because, you know, without AD3, the Lakers lose game two. And I feel like if Vogel had left Rondo in game three, the Lakers might have been able to get it. Because there's just one stretch where he was just like feeling the ball and like layup or like a six or something. And and then you're just, and then you take him out just kind of like, why? But, you know, um, Murray was hurt in game, for most of game five. Um, that certainly didn't help. Also, not really related, I don't think. But, you know, shout out to refs who called Tiki Tack foul and then let dudes knock the crap out of each other. Um, because that makes perfect sense. How are you feeling? Um, I feel like neither one of the closeout games were satisfying. Like, it wasn't, it wasn't the same battle that we saw, like, throughout the entire series. At least not from what I saw, like, the closest, I guess, like, the, uh, <clears throat> I guess the, the Heat was a little bit closer, but it, it never felt like the Heat were going to lose, I guess, on this, on my end. Like, it, like, it, if it's if it's like a two point game and I expect one of them to win, it's probably going to be the Heat because they'll just fight you, and that'll like shore everything up. But like them just trading for buckets, the Heat gonna scrap something out. We know who is going to be like your primary bucket getter, but when he's shooting like eight of twenty one, like you you're not all that worried. And, like, I, I really like Jalen Brown, but, like, Jalen Brown also isn't going to give you that 26 that you need consistently, like, to win. Like, so it's just, I liked it, though. It was cool, but it was, it was so anticlimactic. We've seen so, I, much, we've seen so, so much heat for this past, like, 60 days. So much heat. I mean, like just kind of like just put her out. I I I don't really know how I feel about that game because I misunderstood for, for some reason in spite of myself I misunderstood when it was supposed to start so I only showed up at halftime but like I approached it with a lot of apathy because like I said we've been watching like I know me this I've been watching games almost every like. Every day or almost every day for like what like the past month, month and a half now. And like watch basketball is my favorite sport. It's fun, but it's just kinda like at a certain point, you, you know, you're just like, I, I need a break. Um, so like I I I, I half watched the game. Like so I, for me it felt a little closer, but it's also just like I wasn't looking like that. And you know, you just kinda see Drogic do what he wants. Um, Butler more or less do what he wants. Adebayo do what he wants. Folks miss shots left. I feel like the did Boston miss a lot of shots. I feel like they did. Yep. Okay. Like their main three scorers were like, eh. Like they got the they got their like raw numbers, but if you look at like the shots and like efficiency, nah, not the best, bro. 
Um, but of course, you know, that gets us into um, some slightly other territories. You know, we start, we approach the Heat Lakers series, which, like, my money would be on the Lakers. Um, just one arguably a better collection of talent. I mean, you have you you have LeBron, which basically guarantees you a finals if you have a me- even a mediocre team around him. Um, but you know he's got AD. Um, it'll, hopefully it'll be a fun series. Like, isn't like okay? Is it wrong? Like I kind of I kind of want the series to be a sweep for whoever wins. Like not because not because like I want to see blowouts the whole series, but just like we can put a stamp on this. And like come back to basketball in like a couple months or something. See, I I want this to be. I want to see things end with a bang. Like I am I am fully here for the under twenty. What I think Anthony, how old is Anthony Davis? Is he still under twenty five? He might be what like twenty six. I'm, like, I'm pretty stuff. sure he's older than us. Okay, he's 27. Yeah. But we're about to have a stellar big battle. And regardless of what team came out of the West, we were about to have a stellar big battle. And I don't know why, but maybe because, like, the the new crop of big men coming up, well, technically coming up, they're just really fun to me because they're so skilled. So I, I feel like we win either way it goes. And I'm really interested to see how that goes. But I don't know who will. Like, they got big body dudes. I don't know who will stop LeBron. Like, so that is what I am. That's why I'm, it, like, not super excited. Because I think I think LeBron about to have some, He might have some fun. If they don't be, it, just beat him up. If, if I'm them, what I probably do is, like, I put Jimmy Butler on him and just, you know, pray or something. Like... Yeah. Well, that and, like, when he throws, like, when, when he gives the ball up, like, deny him the ball, like, the like you need to follow him if he goes to the restroom type of thing, like, because it's much harder for him to score if he doesn't have the ball in his hand. Like, someone else will have to do it eventually. I want to see Iguodala come out here and get that, uh, and earn that finals MVP, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here for it. Cook out here glory LeBron for 35 minutes, bro. You got it. Also, um, you know, shouts to Adonis Haslam for still being in the league, apparently. And being, uh, like, slightly scary still. Like, he seems like, intense. Like, still. Like, all of that intensity. I, 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 and he just sits on the bench at this point, at least he has in the playoffs. Like, I saw him and like, wait, he's still in the league? He, he a coach. <laughs> He'll play a coach. That's all that is. He give that he get that vet minimal, so he can stay on the roster. But he's a coach. I don't think I don't think that man played more than like thirty something games this season. I, like he ain't play. He ain't come off that bench. That's not his job. Like, but yeah, if I'm them, I put Butler on him and like deny him the ball for forty minutes, and then when Butler's not in. Put Iggy on him, same thing, nine the ball. Because there's nothing, there's not a whole lot either of them can do once he gets it, if for no other reason than like, what, it's, I guess to use a comic ish or movie analogy, it's like trying to stop Juggernaut. Like, you're probably not going to do it. Um, So you just hope for the best, and they should probably figure out something about Rondo, because like he's, probably going to be an issue not he's probably not gonna like hit you up to like 30 or something like lebron or ad but as i've mentioned before he doesn't fold ever and he's a passing wizard he doesn't fold unless he wants to fold (laughs) basically and he doesn't do that in playoffs it's like i'll give up on you before i quit like i need you i need you to understand that's two different things like and, like, even in that one game that they lost against the Nuggets, like, he was still out there, like, trying after it was, it was, it was like, a couple seconds left and the game is over and he's still, like, running up to guard people. 
and I love that energy and can cause issues. He's just like he's not gonna hurt you, but he's gonna make everybody else more dangerous. I tweeted out a couple weeks ago that um, I hate to see my favorite players get cooked as they get older. And Rondo, it was a, that video of Rondo getting cooked, and I was like, ah, it hurts to see him come back and be like nice for like a two game stretch. I'm like, yeah, yeah, you still got that in you. Um, what do you think hmm? what do you think the the Lakers are going to do about um, I guess Adebayo and Butler is that what the Lakers are going to do about them yeah I think they have enough people to annoy Jimmy Butler like I don't necessarily think Jimmy Butler is really the person that you have to worry about like, it almost seems like um, their first line of attack, at least with uh, Robinson in, is the three-point. Like, if we can get him open for a three, everything else works. Because that opens up space. Because it's just every, it's just your defense around. So if it's Duncan Robinson hitting the first three, I mean, there's not a lot that you can do besides guard the person who would be Jimmy Butler, like, either on that corner, just in case he gets the ball. So, I, I, I really almost think that would be the afterthought a little bit. Because they have the dudes to match up size-wise. It's not Jimmy, like, Jimmy yeah. Butler is like an offense unto himself. Like, he can be slowed down where he's going to get his 15. You can throw Danny Green at him. You can throw Contavious Caldwell Pope at him. Like, and it's not like, um, what, you got to worry about, really, you got to worry about Hero, who's coming off the bench. You got to worry about Dragic. Dragic. I guess you got to worry about Jimmy. And then you got to make sure everybody can, like, they, outside of when they have, uh, when Hero's on the floor, too. That's the only lineup where they really got like four dudes that can create their own shot. Outside of that, you can kind of you can kind of yeah. sit on most people. Like you can kind of sit on Jay Crowder. Like uh, you can sit on Andre Iguodala. Uh, but there's like a lot of motion in the offense too, which makes it kind of hard to sit on certain people. But. So, in your end, we talked about our, I guess, general ignorance. The Clippers appear to have fired um, Doc Rivers uh, or something. Like, I, I guess he's not the coach no more. Um, who, like, who, like, who do they get? To, yeah, okay, they, they, they fired him. Who do you get to, like, replace him, though? I don't, I don't know who's the upgrade. To be honest with you, like I heard talks of it being Ty Lu and Stan Van Gundy, and I don't know about Ty Lu personally. Like I get that he, we keep raving about him; he's putting his time. I don't know what he is as an NBA coach. You had LeBron, like, like there's some bad coaches that had LeBron that had really good seasons, like, like Mike Brown got like a, like a couple fifty win seasons with LeBron. Like that doesn't. Maybe Mike Brown is like a good coach or like stellar. Like Doc Rivers is one of the few dudes who won a ring. And if he couldn't get it done, like like Stan Van Gundy, he's just before my time. So I can't say a lot about a lot about him, but like his commentator job, if that's anything that uh, you mean his, I think you mean Jeff Van Gundy. Stan Van Gundy's with the Pistons. Jeff. Jeff Van Gundy. Ooh, yeah. thank you. Jeff Van Gundy. But anyway, if that is, like, your next upgrade, I don't know what that's like either because it's been almost 10 years since you've done what you've done. And I think Stan, is Stan Van Gundy, he's, he's doing commentating too, right? I, he might do it a little bit. Like, he's yeah. in charge of the Pistons. So, yeah. Um, I mean... Van Gundy can, uh, just looking at his record, like, it looks like he can coach. 
but like I'm not sure like he's probably not an upgrade and like he hasn't coached in 13 years at least not as an NBA head coach anyway and that's so, puzzling I don't know how you've adjusted like I, I'm not like high on your I'm not high on you right now um, and I surely don't know his system at all. I mean, he's apparently currently the national team uh, head coach. But like, our like the men's yeah, Olympics, the U.S. yeah, men's team uh, played the game yet. <laughs> not nah, he was in, um put the head coach of uh, national team since. 2017. So, but hold up, wait. Yeah, yeah. Hold up, wait. <laughs> <laughs> hold up. Like, didn't we do poorly in the last um, world? Like, we. I, hold up. With that being said, we had a filler team. So, if you want to give that. Like, uh, you don't want to weigh that a lot, but if he was there, then yes. Okay. Um, where are these different teams? I'm so confused. Whatever. Um, but, like, uh, like, like, I feel like everybody who could be con- halfway considered a a upgrade over Doc Rivers is either already coaching a team or is retired. And if you're the Clippers, that's that's a problem. Yeah. Like, because Tyloo is definitely not better than, than Doc Rivers. Like, he's he's just not. Regardless of what you feel about him, yeah, he's got, what, a ring or two coaching LeBron, but, like, that's not the highest bar. Um, like, Folstra is, is a good coach, but he's clearly fine where he's at. I don't think he's trying to leave Miami. Um, and you know Pat Riley not coming up off that. Nah. That's just not how that works. Um, like, I don't know, maybe consider Brad Stevens an upgrade, but I feel like he's perfectly happy with the Celtics and, like, They've been doing fine. They just went to a conference final. Um, they didn't get it done, but, like, the team is wildly young as far as teams like that go. Um, Popovich, if he leaves the Spurs, he's going to retire. Exactly. Um, and, like, I don't think there's – unless I'm – Yeah. I like Malone, but he's fine as a, with the Nuggets. He's not trying to leave there. And again, whether or not some of these dudes are actually upgrades is probably debatable. Yeah, like <clears throat> I don't know what it is. That's kind of I feel like I have that same energy with hearing Dan Tony is going to uh, possibly be coaching the Seventy Sixers. Like why? Like what? Like. Like, I, I get the idea of having Jumbo Russell, Russell Westbrook, but the issue with having Jumbo Russell Westbrook, who is, like, Ben Simmons, he don't shoot. So I'm not sure what you do with that offense when there's not a lot of other people who shoot it at a high level. I'm just I'm just not sure why you would even flirt with that. Like, I, I don't get it. Like, what they going to do, trade and beat? Like, I, like, I just don't, I don't, I don't really know. Hold on, wait, wait. Yeah. Wait, what? What's this about Dan Tony? I'm sorry. I feel like, like, wait, did the Rockets fire him or something? Oh wait, they did. They did. They did. Yeah. Yeah. I uh, keeping track of all this is kind of, but yeah, if, if I'm this. No, Dan Tony would be a mistake over there. Why a mistake? Uh, like if they like, if they let that happen, that's oof, that's some bad decision making over there. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Like, who could be James Harden? Shake Milton? <laughs> it's just, it, well, it's just like one plays completely against any kind, any of the strengths that your two best players have. 
to like it ignores the fact that the roster is not set up for his, the way he plays the um the fact that the roster is really fairly poorly constructed around your two best players anyway um and like in fairness i think if you that like if nothing else just let simmons shoot mid-range shots like that'll be okay but that's anathema to how mike d'antoni coaches <clears throat> um and like we talked about like how i like i know i'm on record as like how i feel like how you can be successful with those two best players, but like you gotta, you gotta put Embiid in the post, and you got to have, and you gotta give Simmons a lane to the goal and convince him to take jumpers. Where from it doesn't matter, but he needs to take them. And you gotta rebuild the roster. It's not built to really maximize them, or to or to really complement them as well as it could. And like that's. Kind of, that that's a GM thing. The GM has to take that. But as far as how they play, D'Antoni would be a colossal mistake. If they and if they get him, they're they should probably trade both Simmons and Embiid because like they don't play how he would need them to play at all. Yeah, I I semi understand having Simmons. In that system, but understand like that because he provides so much from like a passing and like playmaking perspective, and he would not like the way they had Russell Westbrook playing where he was just kind of like downhill speed. Like Ben Simmons is like a low to handle. The only difference is like you really he's not like shifty with it. So if he can just get in the paint like off a straight line draw, great. Outside of that, yeah, very, very, like, that's, like, <laughs> super quick Capella, and that would just be a shame to use him as. And, uh, like, I know, I, I, well, people, every, I feel like every time a six, the Sixers head coaching job opens, people, it's like, you should get Jay Wright, but, like, he's not about to leave Villanova. But you should, I mean, like, you should try. He's going to say no. He said no already, but, like, you know. <laughs> It's one of the things. It's just like, it's it's the it's the principle. It's like they're probably gonna say no, but ask anyway, just in case. Like if a head coaching spot opened up for like the Los Angeles Sparks WNBA, for example, which it probably should, but I don't think it will. Um, like you should try and get like John Staley or Gino Ariema. They're gonna say no. They're gonna say no. We already know they're gonna say no, but you should ask anyway. Yeah. What do you think that is, like, a nicety? Just to, just to be like, hey, why not? Like, there's no, like, loss in it. Like, if they say yes, that's really big. If they say no, it's like, oh, we knew that already. Yeah, like, it's kind of just like, there's nothing to lose by asking. We figured you're going to say no going in. But it's just like, maybe, just maybe, we're wrong, and you agree, or you talk with us. Like, you're probably not. But it's worth the effort, because if you do, we get, like, a top tier coach yeah. coaching our team, and like that's always a good thing to have. I don't know, bro. That's a much stressful conversation for me, bro. I feel like it. I feel like talking for the sake of talking. Yeah, I wouldn't quite put it there, but I I understand why you feel that way. It's just kind of it's almost like why did you waste your breath if you already knew how this like if you already had like a ninety nine percent certainty how this was going to turn out. It's just like. Well, you know, maybe I'm wrong. Like, hey, Don Staley, you want to coach the Sparks? No. <laughs> okay, nice talking with you. Oh, I feel like there was a recent story where something like that happened with, uh, oh, Amani Bates. Like, no, no coach talked to him except uh, the coach at Michigan you know? State. Yeah. yeah. Like... <laughs> so he was like, fine, I'll go there. I'm like, oh, that's that's hilarious. I mean, I mean, I, like, I, if your base makes, like, this like, is the only coach actually put in the effort out, and, and like, like, there's a chance, like, I'm going to have to play college ball anyway. Like, <clears throat> and he's got a good team. It's just, 
like a level of petty. I was like, ah, I see what you did there. Like, By the way, if that Michigan State thing works out, this is gonna be a tough team. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be it's gonna be wild. Yeah, like probably just with I don't even know if they would have what like a year or two, like two years. No. Uh, Bates, assuming Bates actually plays at Michigan State. Uh, yeah, they would have it uh that year after twenty twenty two. Especially if he doesn't decide to split after this year. There has been rumblings, but I I doubt that it happened. I I heard about that that he might reclassify. Yeah. I'd rather really see those those dudes that stay in that dudes that come over in twenty twenty one stay to play with him for a year, because that would just be more entertaining. Like that would just be a deeper, better team, bro. That yeah. would like disrespectful. Like, because you have Izzo. And uh, that seems out like uh, time to time, it sounds like wild. And, like, that's, that's disrespectful to everybody else. Because you got experience, and like you have a parent, supposedly the best high schooler since LeBron James, like for real, for real, and not just like how they call like almost every number one hit, like every number one ranked recruit who comes through, like about every year, every other year, like this best, like he's, he's the best. High school player since LeBron James. It's just like at a certain point, it's kind of like y'all, y'all are just saying stuff now. Yeah, but I've heard I've heard Bates is for real. I still haven't seen him play, and like I said, I'm, I don't hype up anyone I haven't seen play. But he's supposed to be the real deal. Look, y'all baller TV, bro. Uh, did he, was he on the summer? This year? I think he was on this year. At least I don't remember seeing any games of him, but you can definitely just look up like Bates Fundamentals. You'll find him. Okay. All right. So I got a list of storylines that I came up with. Just by looking at the rosters of the two finals teams. It's not a lot. Mm -hmm. So. And these are also things that they're already like kind of playing out in like commercial. But the Lakers have not won a championship since 2010. Mm-hmm. It is 2020. It has been exactly 10 years. To tie it into the next one, the last Laker to hoist a finals MVP was Kobe Bryant. So get get ready to have all the tears in the world for like the next week, by the way. Cause you know they're gonna bring it up. Like I'm I'm choked up. Think about it. Not that sounds mad lame, but it's whatever, yeah. And um you know at some point somebody's gonna say something about when they're not honoring of what happened in uh, late January, RIP. And um the uh Will the media have to flip the, like, the story of Jimmy Butler? Like, he went from all these places where he was the toxic person when when we look at it, it's, like, one or two other people that we could probably be like, ah, ah, never mind. But Jimmy Butler just happened to be there, and he's always loud. But now he goes to the right situation. Chance for a championship. Uh, The Iguodala impact, apparently Iguodala has been to six... um, Six consecutive, I think. Yeah, consecutive NBA finals. Like he barely played, but like, come on, bro. Uh he didn't Wa- get a finals MVP out of it. Exactly. Uh and I I mean like this year, like uh this most recent year with the Heat. Like barely played, but still part of it. Um Dwight Howard's redemption story. You go back to LA on a one year deal after having you had this story career, and then after the Lakers, it was a so-so career, but you were still, like, out here. You come back, people actually like you now because you're doing your job. Championship. He was never trash, though. Man. He said what? I know, like, he, was he was never, never trash, trash, but we, we tried to, like, wave him off like he wasn't getting the double-double. Yeah. Yeah. I think, like, during that span, it was, like, 15 and 10. Something like, like that, six yeah. years, like. But he's just kind of bouncing around. 
um, if the Heat win, Goran Dragic becomes a folk hero in his home country. Hands down. He's, he's, well, I don't know. I'm pretty sure he's already won, but that, like, like kind of completes yes. it. Like, you you literally yes. won like, all the basketball awards. Hmm. Like, yes. you did it. You, you did it at, like, the highest level. Like, you, that'd be dope. And, yeah, that's pretty much it. And I feel like I got to get this take off, even though I feel like it's not a take. It's more of a player comp. But uh, I really like Tyler Hero. But he reminds me so much of Jason Terry or like Mike Miller. And I don't mean that in like a bad way. Like they were both like for six years, they averaged 20 points a game. It's just like at this point, like that's that's what that looks like. Like, like just when they were in full blown role player mode, like that's the boy be cooking, bro. He'll be fine. Also, like I thought about this, I think earlier this week. It's it's dumb, but whatever. It's like I, I want him to get really good just so people can say he plays hero ball unironically. Right. I like it's that. just yeah, it's just fun to say. Um oh yeah, also I didn't know Jay Crowder and um Butler played together in Market. They, they played together in Market? They mentioned it um last night, I think. That's yeah. a good storyline right there. Like, yeah. yeah. It'll yeah. this will definitely be an interesting series if nothing else. You know, AD is in his first final. Um and I I'm assuming he's probably gonna be a leading scorer because like I guess that's just not what LeBron is trying to do at this point in his career. Like I I think I saw something where, like, it was, I think, the same thing about LeBron, basically, like, we're, as far as offense, like, we're going through AD or whatever, basically. Yeah. I'm paraphrasing horribly. But it's just, like, I just don't think he's trying to be the top scorer on the team at this point in his career. Like, he could. He, he just doesn't want to. Man, I get it. Take that wor- uh, take that load off your back. You've been carrying it for, what, 20 years? I mean... He's still kind of carrying the Lakers, but like <laughs> he's not so like not alone, obviously, but like yeah. out here averaging like putting up triple doubles regularly in the playoffs. At least one that had like it was like a thirty point triple double. I think it's the thing was like thirteen, uh, like thirty, like thirteen and eleven or something. It was. I'm probably messed one of those numbers up. Yeah. Oh no, bro. If they do this right, we got two weeks of basketball left. Yeah. yeah. That's sad, bro. A little bit, but, like, it's going to be back in, like, December. College ball start is going to start other, about around Thanksgiving. Um, I feel like with college ball, we're really going to see if there's any, like, cancellations due to COVID. Because I have no idea if that's been the case for, like, the football game. What, like, folks catching COVID and stuff? Yeah, like, that being the reason for it. Like, I feel like I'll notice it more then, but I don't know if that... Has that happened yet? Well, we're, like, they cancel stuff because of, like, COVID. Yeah, like, yeah. Memphis uh, canceled a couple games, uh, like, a game, or, or, like, rescheduled a couple games or something because of it. Um, there, I think there are a lot of teams that have had cases and such. Yeah. Um, in fairness, you can be a bit more careful with basketball, but like you're still dealing with college students, and exactly most of them, and like even if they don't do anything, most of them go to like probably have like a class or two in person, and like they might not be doing anything. Like you might have your your best player might just be like, I'm just gonna go, I'm just gonna go, I'm gonna go to class, I'm gonna stay in my room, and I'm gonna go to the gym, and that's it. But, like, everybody isn't doing that. We know this. <clears throat> um, and so, you know, we'll see how that works out for them and everything. But, um, it was like one more thing. Oh, yes. Also, the, um, apparently the... Okay. So the Minnesota Timberwolves. 
Mm-hmm. Um, I guess they don't feel too good about Jared Culver, who they drafted last year. I'm, I'm not really sure why. I'm not. I'm on, hold up. Let me pull up his numbers real quick, just after, so I can look. After a year, apparently they they're probably overthinking it, honestly, um, because dudes like like. A like a, a good rookie, a, a a strong rookie year, dude only a, would only average ten points. At least that's how I scale it. Like if, if your rookie averages ten points, that's a good year. He did fine. He his yeah. three point shooting wasn't great. He he averaged nine point two points, three point four rebounds, one point seven assists, shooting forty percent and like twenty like about thirty percent from three. His like his free three point shooting and free throw shooting were apparently poor but like it's it's a it's a solid rookie season yeah at least wait till like the third year that's just when you really know like but he just maybe he maybe he's mean <laughs> like every time i hear somebody like sour after one year like i unless it's like some noticeable stuff like i don't get it was he just like really bad on defense or something uh, I mean, just to look at his steals and blocks, he probably wasn't all that bad. But he probably wasn't amazing or anything. Um, yeah. like, but yeah, he was. Depending on how you look at it, what metrics you use looking at this stuff, he was. Odd. He was either he was either a good defender or like a mediocre, like a barely mediocre defender. But he wasn't a terrible defender. Like it's not like Trey Young. <laughs> I don't know why you had to throw Trey Young under the bus on this one. <laughs> I'm sorry. He's just he's he's just kind of the metric for like bad defense at the moment. But there. But so the, but the point is they're looking to trade away their uh the their their pick because I think that what they have the number one pick this year, don't they? Yeah. Yeah, I heard they were keying in on Lamelo for some strange reason. Well, I, I guess that that's pretty that's pretty on brand for that trash team. Right. They need somebody. It's just like if I'm them, like, and wait, didn't they just like get um, D'Angelo Russell? Yeah, yeah, like, but like if I'm them, like, you, you kind of have to pick someone who can play on the wing. Like, especially now that I just thought about the Russell thing, because, like, you already have Anthony Towns, and I don't think they're trying to move him. So, like, um, dang it, name. But Wiseman, um, I'm, I'm, I'm afraid to say names, because I feel like I'm messing up. But, like, he, he's, like, they, yeah, like, you, you already have a dude playing in spot. Um, unless you just think Wiseman's gonna be better, can play alongside him or something. Um, I feel One like moment. I <laughs> feel like Wiseman wouldn't be an awful option just because they kind of need somebody that can play better defense than Cat. Uh, but there also seems to be just like a log gem right there because Wiseman doesn't necessarily space the floor. Even though we do know Cat is like one of the best seven foot shooters that we have, so yeah, um, it's just like the stink of Minnesota, bro. I feel like like I don't see any of them like doing well in Minnesota, and it's Minnesota's fault. It's always been Minnesota's fault. It's like it's just the organization. Yeah. Yeah, come on, bro. Right. Like, y'all had Kevin Garnett for years. And Kevin Love. I don't even want to talk about what they did with Kevin Love. Like, Kevin Love was just out here looking really good for no reason. Actually, he was looking really good so he could win a ring for LeBron. You, they, they probably, yeah, they probably need a wing, whether or not they feel like any of the wings are currently worth like a top pick or whatever is a separate thing, but all it's also like relatively 
like what I don't understand is like it's relatively hard to mess up the number one pick. Like you're not necessarily gonna get the best player in the draft, but like you're almost guaranteed a good player. Except uh, like the only real exception was like Anthony Bennett. Hmm. But, like hmm. even the dude who's considered the worst NBA, like the worst number one pick to that point, um, Kwame Brown. He like averaged right around a double double for his career. He did. It was it was tough. I something like that. Don't 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 quote me. Hold up, let me because oh, I gosh. might be telling you something wrong. He he wasn't that bad though. He wasn't actually a bad NBA player. Yeah, I know he's there for like what ten plus years. Like yeah. he was a good player. He just wasn't okay. Correction, he did not. But <laughs> like he was a he was a decent NBA player. He was serviceable. He was below average, but you know he he could be out there. Like, yeah. And and then there's Bennett, and it's just like I'm. You kind of wonder if he actually tried, but you know. Yeah, man. Like basically everybody drafted after him immediately after him was ended up with much better NBA careers. Granted, the bar is to the floor, <laughs> but like. But but like a lot of them dudes turn into good NBA players, though. Yeah. even though it's supposed to be a super weak draft. Yeah, is it wild that I feel, I am like how was that your floor? Like how did how did how did so many people miss on that? That's like a that's a lot. Like that's like Anthony Bennett almost looked like a college level player at times in the NBA. Like how how did we miss that much? Or was it like the injury that kind of drained him? Because he he looked really good in college. Like he like he did look good in college. Uh, I remember that year though they weren't sure who the number one pick should even be. Granted, yeah. I don't think he was really in discussion for it too much <laughs> prior to like them picking him for you know whatever reason. But like the but but it's like. But it's also, like, what makes it worse is, like, how, like, okay, here's some of the other dudes who are in that same draft, right? Because I pulled it up. Victor Aladipo, number two pick. Otto Porter Jr., number three pick. Nerlens Noel, number six pick. Um, CJ McCollum, number nine. Steven Adams, 12. Uh, oh, and it, yeah, he did okay, 13. <laughs> um, Shabazz Muhammad, 14. Giannis Tidakumpo. 15. Dennis Schroeder, 17. Like, Tony Snell, 20. Uh, Tim Hardaway Jr., 24. Rudy Gobert, 27. Like, y- you get the point. But do you remember for, like, a short time, for, like, a couple months, Otto Porter Jr. was possibly the best player to come out of that draft? Vaguely? Like it was just it was like a brief time. It was like when the Wizards were playing in like the playoffs. They were like, Otto Porter is like really useful. And it was like like a year and a half before uh, Antetokounmpo like really looked like a superstar. I think it was like in in a in their second year. I believe I, is when they were making uh, the playoffs. If not, I'm just making all this up. They made it his first. Washington made it his first four years in the league. Uh, wait, no, no, correction. No, no, that's more. Eh. They they made it sporadically, but <laughs> like he was he he was playing good basketball. Like after like his first two years, he's playing solid basketball in Washington. Um, he went to then he he's in Chicago now, which I missed somehow. Um, but I mean, he's not the biggest name, so and like he's doing okay. But has he stayed hurt or something? Because like his first, because twenty eighteen nineteen, he played fifteen games. Um, like this season, he played fourteen. Yeah. <laughs> hey, he got that check though. 
I think uh, I think Washington gave him a max before he uh, before they traded him. They probably did. Like, well, I'm not sure what that would make sense, but whatever. Um, but it's just like they they like Cleveland drafted Anthony Bennett. Um, and like. It, and it's just like in hindsight, one, this is a stronger draft than I think they thought it was going to be at the time. Um, and, like, the Cavaliers really, really messed that one up. I mean, it is the Cavs, yeah. They Alex Rab, the- second, uh, thir- 30, uh, the 31st pick in the draft. I'm just, look- I'm sorry, I just looked. Well, I get it. No, like I don't think like I don't think there's too many other people. I'm pretty sure Jeff Withy is still in the league. 39th pick. Is he still? No. Okay. Well, he he was, he was he was he, he was there he was there longer than Benny. <laughs> That's not saying a lot. But that man, he was seven foot one in cheeks. <laughs> <laughs> So I mean, like, I know Zeller's still in the league, and, like, I I didn't mention him. And he was the fourth pick in that draft. Now, of course, he's not really worth a fourth pick, but it's Wait, just like... Fourth pick. It's just like all these players. Caldwell Pope. Oh. Eighth pick. Useful. <laughs> like... It's, it's just like all these players that actually halfway stuck in the league, and you pick the one that. <laughs> Not only that, you pick them with the first pick. You was loud and wrong. You were loud first and wrong. Like you could have been anything, but you chose to be those three things. Wow. I, it's hard to mess up that badly. Like, in fairness, he did look good in college, but, like, still, it's just, like, it's it's hard to mess up that badly. Yeah, I think the worst part about it, one, one like, two or three people were saying, like, that's definitely the number one pick. That's when it becomes a little weird. Like, who, who told you this, who told you this was the right one? Sure. But, yeah, so they're trying to shop their pick. I know the uh, the Warriors have been like it's already known like they're trying to move that number two. I personally think they should just get Wiseman and like call it a day. I'm not really sure who you're gonna because cause, like he can help you now and like he's insurance. He'll be able like his Curry and like Thompson age. He can carry more of the load and like y'all could use some rebounding um, or something. And wait, wasn't Sadiq Bay pretty good this year? Granted, they were hot garbage at the team. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and they and they have Wiggins, whether however you feel about that. Wait, did you say Sadiq Bay? Yeah, I think it's Sadiq Bay. Are you like, talking about uh that play for um Go to State? Nova. Yeah. I'm like I thought he was doing good. Was talking talk? about Eric Pascal? I think uh, I think Sadiq- I might be confusing them. Yeah, Sadiq Bay is coming out of the, this draft this year. Okay, my bad. Yeah. But yeah, Pascal was pretty good for them. Um, granted, like I said, the team was hot garbage, but you know, it's good practice for him. You'll get better. <laughs> good practice and a check. Yeah, and a check. Um, but it's also just kind of like who are you going to convince to take the number one pick and, like, give you their functional star? You know what? They should try Detroit. Is it... Who is Detroit going to move? Like, what logically makes sense for them to, like, move? In fairness, I don't... I'm I'm not really sure, but it's also kind of like they just haven't done a whole lot. Like, they try to be competitive, at least the moment that I haven't done a whole lot. Like, but it's like, if you're, if you're, if 
if I'm the GM for the Warriors, I'm thinking we probably need a big. Yeah. Granted, you know, we probably want ideally we'd want one who could like shoot threes or otherwise just like have skills outside of just being a big dude who rebounds occasionally. Um but like I don't know, Blake Griffin, um, or Andre Drummond. I don't know how the honestly I don't know how the money works out now that I'm thinking about it. Yeah. Because the money might be an issue for those uh, making the money work. And that could cause hiccups for, if they like, yeah, let's, this is what we want to do. And I think that's where we go run right into the problem. Because um, <clears throat> I think Golden State is kind of maxed out money-wise, like salary crap wise So if they take on any more money, that's going to be um, in the luxury tax, which Buddy says he's okay with paying. But this is COVID. So his money might look different, um, especially because like all his money was tied up in tech, and apparently like that area is not doing too well. So we're gonna see how that looks. And then uh, what Blake Griffin, his contract is crazy. I think he's on like a max. Uh, and then Detroit doesn't have uh, Andre Igu- uh, Andre Drummond anymore. I think they traded him for bubble gum. I don't exactly remember what the trade was for. I just don't. Okay. I feel Cleveland. like it's, I feel like I missed that somewhere. Yeah. He went to Hold Cleveland, on. and they got a promising uh, big named Christian Woods, who seems to be pretty good. And but the, my biggest issue is it again? It's the organization. It's Detroit. They seem to always have. Um, unless they're doing really well, they handicap themselves some some way they're not moving up like <laughs> like i don't know if they could come up with a package where they can move uh move that pick like who do you, who do you want uh it's Sekou Dumboya. so if you want to make something happen with Sekou, but it would be so stupid for them to package that uh that away like you're literally trading all your future do you, i have to, i hate that i have to say it like this but I got a uh, homeboy who's a Detroit Pistons fan, and I cook him every single time we talk about the draft. Because they steady do nothing. And they're consistent at that one thing. They they capsized the boat. This is nothing. No, the best thing they could do was hope for a higher draft pick this year, and they got the seventh pick. Their luck. I don't know what it is. I don't know if it's punishment from the league, but boy, they need some better luck. Question: What would they be punishing them for? Like Isaiah Thomas hasn't played for them in what about thirty years? The only thing I could possibly think about is they're still mad about Malice in the Palace. That's the only thing I think about. <laughs> like the league officials are still mad about Malice in the Palace, so there's like you got to suffer for like the next twenty years. And if that's the case, that's about to come. Actually. Let's let's see how long ago that was. I feel like we just had a. Uh... That was early two thousand. So if that's the case, uh, two thousand four. If that's the case in twenty twenty four, everything will write itself. But with that being said, that does mean you will miss out on only money face. <laughs> so in 2024, if, they get, if everything like shakes out and the, and the cards that I just gave them randomly is up, you miss out on the money Bates, which is the sweetest punishment that could possibly happen, especially from a kid from Michigan that is planning on going to Michigan State. That would be hilarious. That would be the I, best thing ever. That would be tragic. Ah. Like... LeBron ended up in Cleveland. It, granted, like, it's not going to happen, but it makes sense if Bates... Like, it'd be cool. It'd be a cool story if Bates ended up with the Pistons. Yeah. It's just not going to happen. It, yeah. It makes me it's, happy. It's not. All right, bro. You got anything else? Um, nah, I don't think so. All right, bro. I think it's time to go ahead and close out. Remember, I am your host, Alan Pettigrew, and thank you for listening to another episode of the Traveling Hoopers podcast.
And, you know, I'm Calvin McGowan. Uh, thanks for joining us once again um, on YouTube with this. You know, like, share, and subscribe and all that. So, yeah. All right. Peace.